I'm looking at a guitar boost circuit here, and this one uses an NPN common emitter transistor circuit. To get started, I have a sine wave on the top trace. It's 1 kilohertz and 38.5 millivolts RMS. And right now, the bottom trace shows the output of this transistor circuit around 833 millivolts RMS. Here's the component values that I'm using. And as far back as in the 60s, this type of circuit structure was used in boost pedals with similar values to this. So similar to how I calculated values in a previous video about the common emitter amplifier, I have a 10K and a 390 ohm resistor here. So the gain of this circuit is going to be 10K divided by 390, and that calculates out to a gain of around 25.6. And based on the input and output sine wave voltages, we had around 833 millivolts RMS divided by around 38.5 millivolts RMS. So that's a gain of 21.6. So that's the ballpark gain. The input impedance here will be the 510K in parallel with the 51K, and those in parallel with beta times this emitter resistor. So I'm using a 2N5088 transistor, and I measured the gain, it's around 300. So 300 times 390 ohms. So all those three impedances in parallel calculate out to an input impedance around 33k. And that's kind of low, especially when a guitar is directly plugged in here. Depending on the kind of pickups and other circuitry like potentiometers and how everything is set, how many pickups are turned on at once, a typical pickup could be between 5k and 15 or 16k. So 33k here will load down the pickups, and that can be good or bad depending what you are going for. We have an output 100k pot as a level control. Then we have our input and output DC block capacitors. The output is 100 nano, and the input, experimentally I can change this between 1 nano and up to 1 micro, where the higher the capacitance, the more base frequencies are allowed to pass through here. So if this capacitor is a higher value, 100 nano or more, this could be considered a clean boost, where it boosts the low and the high frequencies at this gain. But if you reduce this capacitor, you start blocking some of the base frequencies, and then when you boost that signal, the effect is you're boosting mid-range and treble. So a lower input capacitor results in a treble boost circuit. So in general, a clean boost or a treble boost can be used in several ways. Most commonly, one way is just as a temporary increase in volume. For example, if you're about to go into a guitar solo, you might turn on the boost and then get a slight volume increase into the amplifier. Or if the amplifier is set just before it starts to distort, or if it's already distorting somewhat, you can turn on the boost and get it to distort more. And similar to that, you can boost into a distortion pedal and change the characteristics of that distortion as well. The reason to use a treble boost instead of just a clean boost, it can depend on what kind of amplifier you're using. Especially when you turn them up loud, some amplifiers can just sound a bit too muddy with too much bass. In order to experiment with this circuit, I built the main transistor boost circuit on this transistor breakout board. So with all of these wires all over the place, it helps keep the circuit more stable. And since I want to experiment with different value input capacitors, I'm using this capacitor breakout board I made with today's sponsor, PCB Way. So I have four dip switch banks of nine switches, and I have nine capacitors on each bank. Here are a bunch of one nanos, 10 nanos, 100 nanos, and one micro. So each time I turn a switch on, I'm adding one of these value capacitors in parallel with the two terminals. So if I want 12 nano, I can turn on the switch to get a 10, and then two switches up here to get one plus one nano added. And 
empirically, I'm just going to change these capacitors and just observe my bottom trace output signal to see how the input capacitor impacts the base frequencies. I'm starting out with one micro, so I'm going to turn this one kilohertz into just 100 hertz now, and I'm going to select a one nano capacitor, take away the one micro, and we've basically filtered out this 100 hertz. So now if I bring the frequency back up, we can see the output is increasing, and then it basically stays the same as we keep increasing, more or less. So back to 100 hertz. Now if I make it a 10 nano on the input capacitance, we're getting some more base frequencies through. If I make it 20 nano by turning on another 10 nano in parallel, it increases another 10 nano, and so on, and there's 100 nano. So our output originally was around 833 millivolts RMS. With a 100 nano input capacitor, we have about 764 millivolts RMS at 100 hertz. If I bring back the one micro, so it's one micro in parallel with 100 nano, there's 828 or so millivolts RMS. So it's close to what we started with. Now I can try hooking up a guitar and an amplifier instead of this sine wave generator, play around with these input capacitors, and see how it changes a guitar sound. I'm only using a small practice guitar amplifier, so it's hard to demonstrate the full intent of a boost circuit, but I can show what happens when you change that input capacitor and change the bass. The top trace on the scope is the incoming guitar signal. The bottom trace is what's coming out of the boost circuit. So when in bypass mode, both traces should be identical. And when I turn on the boost, we should see the bottom trace getting amplified as I turn up the level. 